In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create and use a punch tool in a sheet metal environment. The file that we're going to use for this lesson is called punchstart.ipt and it can be found in your chapter 10 exercise folder. Inside of this file, I've already created some sketch geometry, so let's go ahead and use the look at tool. So you can see what it's consisting of here. I've also used some parameters to help define some of the basic shape that I want to have the user go back and define when placing in the punch. The key when creating a punch is that we need a center point and that's what I have right in the middle of my component here. So that center point is going to be used to help locate the punch in our sheet metal part. So you'll see a lot of similarities here when creating this punch tool is that it's the exact same workflow as though we're going to create an eye feature again the only difference here is that we're going to go back and we're going to utilize a center point that is a requirement so what I'm going to do now from the sheet metal features I'm going to go ahead and make this into a cut and let's just select in our four areas that we want to remove that material let's switch to an isometric view so we can see what's happening and you'll notice again I'm going to use the thickness value for the extents so now that I have my feature created what I want to do is extract that and I'm simply going to select from the tools pull down extract eye feature and the only difference here now is I need to go back and select on the sheet metal punch eye feature option and then in the graphics window I'm just going to go ahead and select on the feature and you'll see all of my parameters that I mentioned before are already populating the information here so of course I could go back and remove one if I didn't want to have the user enter in some of that information just like with an eye feature you can go back and you can set a limit you can change the prompts as well so if needed go back and review the lesson on creating an eye feature we have a few more options when creating a punch. You'll notice down on the bottom here where it says manufacturing, I can go back and specify a punch ID. So in this case, when we go back and create that on the manufacturing side, we'll know exactly what ID punch to use. I can also go back and specify a custom depth. So custom depth is used when placing in a punch that we may have some deformation of the material and you may want to punch it a little bit further. This information here for the manufacturing of the ID and the custom can go back and get pulled out when placing in a whole table that will pull the information from the punch. We also have the option here for a simplified representation and in this file I've already created a second sketch that we can go back for a simplified representation so I'm going to go ahead and click on sketch and I'm going to click on sketch 3 in the browser now if I move the dialog box over you'll see that my simplified sketch in this case really is kind of defining of my three profiles here and they all come into a single intersection so it's a little bit easier to see on the manufacturing side and when we go back and actually create a flat pattern that's where we can go back and designate which of these representations do I want to see do we want to see the punched or just the simplified representation or the center mark and there's a fourth option with the representation and the center mark so we'll cover that in the lesson on creating flat patterns so next let's go ahead and save our file and I'm gonna call it CBT punch and I'm going to place this into my punches folder click on save I'm being warned that it's not in the project in this case that's okay so now let's start up a new sheet metal part that we want to place this into so we'll just start off by drawing a rectangle let's give it a couple dimensions switch to an isometric view I'm going to make this my first face and let's make it look a little bit more like a sheet metal part I'm just going to go back and add a couple flanges and now what I want to do is I want to place in a couple of those punches so next let's use the sketch tool to make the plane the active sketch that I want to place in my punch now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place in a couple center points 
these center points will match up to the center point that we used to create the punch tool. And of course at this point you could go back and you could place in your dimensions onto those center points. In this case I'm just going to right click say done. We're going to exit out of the sketch environment. And now back to the sheet metal features panel. I'm going to go back and select on the punch tool. And from the list let's go ahead and click on CBT punch. We'll click open. Now from my list here, it's defaulting to the CBT punch. It's alerting me to the fact that I have a simplified rep. Now under the geometry tab, I can go back and rotate this if needed. So if I go back and type in 45, you'll see that the geometry has rotated 45 degrees. I'll change that back to zero. Under the size tab, so this is where we can now go back and change the values. So I'm going to change the cut angle to 40 degrees. And the OD right now is at 10 millimeters. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Let's make it 20. And I'm going to go ahead and click on finish. And you'll see that the punch has been placed. And of course in this case I'm falling right back off and that's not a big deal. Remember when I placed in those center points I didn't dimension them. So just like a regular standard feature, I can go back and edit its sketch. I can move that geometry over, place in a couple dimensions if needed. And of course the punch will get updated. If I want to go back and change that, I can just double click on the feature. So in this case, let's go back and change the degrees to 50. And let's change the size to 15 for the outside diameter. And everything gets updated. So again, the manufacturing ID that we placed and the custom depth, that information can get extracted when we create a drawing view and using the whole table tool. And that will be covered in the lesson on documenting sheet metal parts. So very quickly here, if I went back here now and I opened up the IDE, the punch that we just created, you'll notice that it's just like an eye feature where I can go back and I can use the feature author table tool to go back and make modifications if needed.